Game of Thrones season eight, episode three. Night we've all been waiting for the long one. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, guys. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> that was Mrs. October's idea for sure. <laughs> this is a long night. I'm just pumped. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> whoa, whoa, you encroaching. And a lot of people was asking how he felt about this right here. I love it, man. It's almost like that uh that Unreal Engine 5 came out. <laughs> and took over but Westeros. There was something so simple about Unreal Engine 4. I didn't even know there was Unreal Engines at all. All the engines I knew felt pretty real to me. She's a gamer. You know when you're just like nervous, so you just try to try to like laugh it off. That's how I feel right now because I'm actually extremely nervous. I for feel this that episode. nervous energy. Ugh. I feel like this game is kind of like this game <laughs> or this intro is kind of like no one's Minecraft when he gets to shaders. <laughs> the shader pack. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool that you can see that map thing. Mm -hmm. That dragon's name is Balerion, right? Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, dude. Game of Thrones time. We have to enjoy these. They're coming to an end. Right. Shout out to the cello, man. Chubby hands we got. <laughs> Varys? Oi. Oh, that's Sam. Oh. I thought Varys was nervous. I was out of character. <laughs> Dang, the Unsullied headed to war, man. Oh. Sam, you're so brave. You could have went down to the crypts. Your boys wouldn't have even shamed you for it, but... And you had the legendary sword. That was a tough transition. The two underrated killer POVs. <laughs> Man, there ain't no telling what brand's thinking right now. I know. Or three eye, my bad. Three eye brand. Oh yeah, that's right. Brand's going to the Godswood with Theon. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. As literal bait. Like, what the heck, man? What's on the menu today, boys? Three-eyed raven. <laughs> oh my God, sorry. I'm not trying to be funny right now. It's just nerve wracking, you have to. I'm glad they got those dragons that I've been hating on. The way those they march hard. is so cool. It's so uniform. The North Rocky. <laughs> In your terms. Mm -mm. Those are the Duff Rocky right there. <laughs> the free folk. This is the scrappy side, but this is the side that's gonna do it right here. This is like endgame. Oh, sake, it took your time. Ghosty. I feel like my favorite character should be in that castle defending it. Who's your favorite character? Everybody. <laughs> I don't oh. really know why they're outside of the castle. I thought castles were like endgame in the show. If you was inside of one, it was really hard to get you. Right. The Dothraki need to be out there though, in open field. Because that's where they're best. I'm whispering so they don't hear me. Oh. Oh! The red woman. Melisandre. I mean, we could kind of use her help. Come on. You got some Lord of Light stuff? Tell them to lift their swords. Viva no Arak Shafti. Aix yo sonio. Ao sonio silon miskas. Zobria isa se signo to ledis. Oh, she about to turn him into dragon. <gasps> oh, on fire. Nice. That Lord of Light, baby. He's here for y'all. Okay, that was a lot smarter than what I was about to say. Never mind. What'd you say? LOL. LOL. So now they can actually fight because they didn't have any dragon glass. They, their okay. weapons were kind of pointless, though. Yeah, I, I mean, unless Gendry, like, glass them up. That was fire, Melisandre, literally. Davos is like, F her, but thanks for that. I just had a little slip gate. of an arrow. <gasps> you let her come in. Well, you have to. She might put their swords out. They're yeah, like, never mind, guys. She's basically holding you hostage. Yeah, he's got words for her. Oh, I mean, she's gonna die. There's no need to execute me, Sir Devos. I'll be dead before the dawn. <laughs> How'd you know that? Because remember, she said next time she comes here, she's gonna die. Oh, yeah, I do remember her saying that. Yeah, that looks crazy. Yeah, they're going to that open combat. Let's go. Let's go. This is what they're here for. Hey, I got faith in them. They came. Yeah. Jamie hyped them. Yeah, he did. He, he said, said mm -mm. He said, I'm telling y'all. They paint like Bob Ross out there. <laughs> that was like something you would see in like ancient China or something. Like just insane. Yeah. This is insane. <gasps> Look at that. Daenerys is like, that's my boys. She's like, I recruit better than Nick Saban. <laughs> <laughs> she does. <laughs> but who they bombing? I didn't realize the army was so close. Me either. They're charging at it. <gasps> oh, 
Oh no. Oh no. Not Jory, not Ghost. Or the Dothraki, but you know. They better win. I just got chills because that scares me. It's the first time the Hound wanted to see fire. What? Y'all better siege, boys. Oh, Jorah, okay. The Night King is coming. The dead are already here. Oof. Where's she going? Hopefully to get on a dragon, right? I don't like that little subconscious heartbeat going on. I know, it was giving me so much anxiety. <laughs> Oh, game time. He's scared. He's scared because he's in love. Sunday. No. Why didn't they get fire on theirs? Dang. Look at her. That was such a Brian thing to say. I love it. Is she okay? Oh, let's oh, go. Let's go. Let's go. That's Danny right there. She said crumbly. She's holding on for dear life, boy. Is that Jonathan? Yeah. Let's go, John and Regal. John said, gotta go to the upper management. It's way too early to take your shot. They ain't even scared of it. They're just but standing if he, there. But if he like fires one of them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh no. Oh, the Night King's here. I was just saying if he kills one of those White Walkers, it kills like multiple of the Get army of dead. So. If you kill the Night King, yeah. I'm not abandoning my people. Take this and go. I don't know how to use it. Sticking with the pointy end. What a callback moment. I know, right? <laughs> Arya needs to be out there where she can see in that dark. Yeah, because she's like the ultimate fighter in the dark. Mm -hmm. That's how you do the mac and cheese on the top. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> And creme brulee. Let's go, Jorah. Jorah on high. Brienne has some Valyrian still as well, so let's go. Did we put this? Did we put the cover on the girl? It was hot. I gotta put it on. It's storming. So I'm sitting here, and then all of a sudden, dude, it is just going crazy outside. So you know what I'm saying? A southern Georgia thunderstorm, and then our little black stone girl. Luckily, the the grill cover was so big because, boys, I just hopped in it. And then I went over there and I was inside of it and I waddled and I stretched it like I had on like a pregnancy shirt. And I put it over it and then I got out from under it. And then I got inside after I got struck by lightning. <laughs> I'm, I'm cold. I'm soaked. I'm ready to go. And you know what's funny, guys? Today we're on the porch and I lift and I told him to lift up the covers and one of our pugs comes out of me. <laughs> Oh, Ed oh let's him. go in. Two D's, baby. Let's go. <gasps> no. no. <laughs> Who is that? I don't know. Better than a damn legend. Man, rest in peace to Ed, guys. That sucks, man. It's her first casualty, right? Yes. It's like a Cersei moment for Sansa. She can like go drink and no wow. things with Tyrion, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot that he had to go down to the crypts. Remember, she made everyone join in song to distract them. Sansa in the Battle of Blackwater. Why are you flying so low? There's that storm. <laughs> oh, was that him and Danny running into each other? Yeah. Oh my. Pull back! Pull back! <gasps> Fall back. Open the gate! Oh, no. Please don't tell me that's great one. So basically the Dothraki and the Unsullied just got butchered up. So that's old that's Danny's whole army. <laughs> Except for dragons. Winter is coming was an exaggeration, boy. I mean not an exaggeration. <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this? Uh, uh oh. Oh, it's dragon time for him. Let's go. Is that Unsullied? Yeah. Yes. They're holding the line. You need to get back, Grey Worm. Yeah, you're necessary to bring back up. Oh, they're setting them on fire. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Aw. Man, she I would have never you. seen them. I'm coming! Come on! Fall back! <gasps> that was Grey Worm. That was Grey Worm by the run. Yeah, that's it. How many he was wearing? They give us this, oh, this no, thing. Look. <laughs> Look at him, man. Perfect soldiers just standing there. Light the track! Light the track!
Oh, they're gonna use the dragon. Oh, they can't see. The dragons can't see. The breakaway trench. Davos looks like one of those airplane people. <laughs> Light the trenches! <laughs> Don't do it, Gruen. He's about to go do it. <laughs> oh, the red woman's walking out like she oh, got something. Is. LOL. Man, she's standing in the pocket. She is. <laughs> oh, nice. That last minute. So the Lord of Light loves suspense and drama, huh? Yeah, man. You could have done it one second faster for all of us. Man, they better hope that wood burns for a long time. So far, the MVP is Melisandre, aka the LOL, too. <laughs> That's his worst nightmare. I though. know. He's like, oh, heck no. Nah. At least we're already in a crypt. If we were up there, we might see something everyone else is missing. Something that makes a difference. <sighs> what? Remember the Battle of Blackwater? I brought us through the mud gate. And got your face cut in half. And it made a difference. If I was out there right now. You'd die. Nothing you can do. You might be surprised at the lengths I'd go to avoid joining the army of the dead. <laughs> I can think of no organization less suited to my talents. Witty remarks won't make a difference. Isn't it funny they were married? It's the most heroic thing we can do now. Does not become a number. Look the truth in the face. In that. Maybe we should have stayed married. <laughs> you were the best of them. What a terrifying thought. <laughs> <laughs> Over the re options. <laughs> Oof. It wouldn't work between us. Why not? The Dragon Queen. Your divided loyalties would become a problem. <laughs> Without the Dragon Queen, there'd be no problem at all. We'd all be dead already. That's right. You gotta love a hype man, huh? That's loyal, though. Run. I just want you to know the things I did. Everything you did brought you where you are now. Where you belong. Home. Aww. So he's basically, like, got forgiveness from everybody he needs to at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go now. Where? <gasps> Dragon time, baby. Go where? <gasps> Let's go. Bro, that is not a dragon. Oh, that's multiple birds. Why is he spying on them with birds? I have no idea. <gasps> he told them to do that? To sacrifice themselves? Smother the fire, maybe? Yes. <gasps> so he can command them. He just feels like he's so close. He's, he just has to, right? On the walls. Oh no. Yeah, that trick didn't really work too much, did it? He's on a dragon, huh? Let's go. Oh my gosh. They're making like a wall of skeletons. Ugh. That's like zombie apocalypse 101. Nice. Let's go, Jamie. Come on! That was great room, right? I couldn't even tell. If it is, I hope he's okay. Man, how are they supposed to win this? I know, they're There's so no overwhelming, way. them numbers. What a shot. Oh, nice. They're dragon stoned or dragon glass. Yeah. <laughs> are you just waiting for a character to drop at any moment? Is that I, what you're waiting I on? have no idea. I don't know what I'm expecting. I'm expecting like someone to have a 1v1 with a Night King, I guess. Whoa. Let's go, Arya. Let's go, girl. Oh, she just tore that thing in half and started using it. That was cool. Nessart would be so proud right now. He's like, that was nice. She said, well, I smell an onion. Mm -hmm. Turn around. <laughs> oh! No, not on her! <gasps> hey. Man, you hate to see it. I know, because he's like, one's your friend. Was that Lady Mormont right there? No! Get no. up, Lady Mormont! Get up! Again, we need you! Yes, we do. Can't give up on the fuck off! Get mad at them, not him! We're fighting death! I can't beat death. He needs to see Arya, right? Tell her that. There you go. He's like my goddaughter. That's my motivation right there. <laughs> I kind of love that. Why do I love that so much? No. No, no, no. I don't love this. Oh, no. Not Ellie. <laughs> a gangster. A gangster. Man, she talked a big game and she backed it up. Mm -hmm. Man. Toughest little lady in the whole... 
Seven Kingdoms. Tough as lady in HBO. Because she survived two zombie apocalypse. Well, she didn't survive it, actually. She died. But, uh. I know Jon Snow and Joel got the same personality. <laughs> this is about to be like the Pokemon movie. Where the Charizards are fighting in there. <gasps> it's kind of what it looks like. It does. <gasps> oh, no. Is the Night King still on board? It's a dang Articuno. So he wasn't even on that one. That thing just went up there and just- He's just commanding it. He created it. The Night King's a G, Loki. This is insane. Them two of these dragons up there. I know, because like a whole war is going down on and they're just like amongst the clouds. So crazy. That scared me, that little transition. Yeah. <laughs> this is like The Last of Us when they're sneaking around the little cordyceps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the museum scene. Baby, what's she about to be like? Like, oh, she's acting like an assassin <laughs> on Assassin's Creed. <laughs> I'm not directing, guys. I'm just helping her out. <laughs> oh, her eye looks so crazy, doesn't it? Oof. <gasps> the head tilt. And she's quicker than Ghostface, ain't she? Because you know how when you look under the car, he's gone all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smart. I didn't realize there was so many guys. I thought she was about to jump on his back like Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Oh god, <laughs> that just scared the tar out of me. <gasps> she did do it like that. Oh my gosh, that scared the dickens out of me. <sighs> that wow, was... that was crazy timing. Oh man, you better run. <gasps> Isn't it scary to be in the crypts though? That's what I'm thinking about. Like, yeah, yeah scary. How you? Can't you raise them up? You're just waiting to be slaughtered, just praying that you aren't. They're coming so good. Look, he's like. <laughs> you just can't, you know? Tyrion's gonna have to reproduce with all those ladies. <laughs> oh yeah, cause Varys can't. He's up for the job. Beric looks fire. I just, I need to point that out. He looks so mm -hmm. cool. <gasps> it's Arya! <laughs> nice. Man, she is so lucky the hounds in her life. Run! Run! No! It's his last life. Don't know. Oh, yeah, stab. Gotta go! Oh, we picked her up. Oh, man. Aww. I hope that was like his purpose. Well, he's got to come back again because I don't think he fulfilled it. <laughs> Unless it was just save the hound and Arya or something. I know. How many times did he come back? Like seven or eight like times? six. You can't die yet. I didn't even know he made it out. The Lord brought him back for a purpose. Right. What was it? No, that purpose has been served. Oh, to save her? I know you. I know I know you. You said we'd meet again. And here we are. The end of the world. You said I'd shut many eyes forever. Oh, yeah. You were right about that, too. Brown eyes? Green eyes and blue eyes. And blue eyes. I thought that meant Joffrey or Cersei. She's talking about the, the, the Mad King, right? The blue eyed dude? The White Walkers. What do we say to the God of Death? Not, not today. today. Leo, not today. Not today. Mother. Maybe that was that guy speaking to her through her. Oh no, give me a lighter. I'll find out. Make every shot count. Oh no. That looks insane. Oh. Man, John. He's in the trenches always. I was about to say, they're in the way he's holding on. And his hands are cold. <gasps> Not a spear. Oh, Drogon? Oh. <laughs> Let's go, let's go. There he goes. Dracarys. Yeah, free shot. Dracarys. Nice. That felt easy, right? Like, kind of too easy? Like, yeah. That's all we needed to do? John said, hell yeah. What's he gonna look like cooked? I mean, obviously, right? Because that was way too easy. He said, you ain't the only one, my girl. <laughs> so he's basically fireproof, huh? He's a troll, too. You saw him smile? <laughs> you gotta dip out, you gotta go. Ah, oh, what a close. 
Okay, so you can't do it with fire. Mm-mm. John said, but that good old Valyrian will work. He said, P.S. I got some B.S. <laughs> the other one heard blood drop. He's going to hear John. Right, that's what I'm saying. Wait. He said, I'm going to stew it. <laughs> I'm going to stew it. <gasps> We've seen this all before, Jonathan. Jonathan. Let's go, John. He said, I got to get there. He said, before those hands get all the way up, I'm going to chop them off. <gasps> no way. Do you see that unsullied? Get there, John. I don't know what you're going to do when you get there, but get there. You can do it. What is this? Just like a flex of his army? He's not even attacking him. Now y'all got to do it all over again. With more people, right? No, 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 no. Oh, man. <gasps> Tooties, man. So John's gone. He just turned around and said, mm, don't need you. Where's the three eye? That was really defeating. I know. <gasps> and dead starts are popping up. Ned's head was on a pike, so. Hopefully he don't pop up. Oyana might. Oh no. Oh no. That's so scary. I feel like he needs a sword or something. You only have so many arrows. Denier said, I got you. Man, give him a lift. Oh my gosh, Denier. So you're about to get overran, girl. Yeah, you need to get that ah. bird in the air. They don't take down another dragon, do they? Oh my gosh. Oh no. Do a turn, yes. Oh my gosh, that didn't even hurt him. That's a thin. Yeah. Who is it? Nobody likes thins. Jorah. That's Jorah with a capital J right there. Oh, oh that's Sam. Oh my Save gosh. him. He's leaving him. Did you see him just look at him and keep it moving? I feel like it's because this yeah, is a I life mean, or death know. mission right I here. I know, but God, that hurts, man. I know, that's your bestie. <laughs> Brian, you're so cool as a cucumber. Well, he's not even there. I think he's still a bird right now. Oh, the he's Raven. working? Oh, the nearest doesn't even have this, this style of fighting. Just her and Jorah. <gasps> Oh man. Where's Tyrion? Is that him? Tonta, where is she at? Oh, there they go. <laughs> wow. Well. Please tell me this turns around somehow. Is that Varys? Hiding the little children. The little bugs. Oh my goodness. This is so impossible almost. Spine tingling music right now. Oh, here he comes. Like he's near the trees. Here comes Islam. Islam Makachev's entered the building, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he's just rolling up really cool, isn't he? Like that's the scary part. No emotion. Good job, Dion. What was Bran doing the whole time? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out, but like, what? He like came back like he got me or something. That's what's scary. Theon, you're a good man. <laughs> Thank you. That's so sad. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> well, that's tough. It's kind of fire coming out of his neck. Yeah, because it got like bit or something. Is that what it is? <laughs> Poor Yara. She doesn't even know. Dude, he held it for a long time. <laughs> oh no. Please tell me we ain't about to lose Jorah too. Not Jorah, Dang, Mormont, Someone man. just giving it their all, man. He pushed, he, you see the way he pushed out the way? Uh-huh. He's got the longest nails. My man's a coke head. <laughs> <laughs> He's on that ice, baby. This music though. Come on, Brian, what you got planned? Oh no, he has something, right? What's he waiting on?
What? That's the same junk she did to freaking Brienne of Tar. Dude. I know. When they were training. No way, Arya. Do you think John thinks he did that by yelling at it? I don't know. He yelled it to death. Holy junk. That is crazy for Arya. Who would have thought Arya would have done that? I thought but it was going to be John or Danny the whole time. It made sense because she's she's done all this ninja training and you just can't get past this guy. But it seems like she was the one who could do it. Right. Does that mean she has his face now? Hey. Oh, man. What, Masande made it? Varys? Mm-hmm. Wow. That start would be proud, wouldn't he? Oh my gosh, yes. No. <laughs> Died how he lived, man. Oh. So the hound had his role to play too. Protecting Arya. Everyone did. We should write songs about her performance tonight. Jeez. Oh. You got your wish, Sir Davos. You got your wish, man. Oh my gosh. So that's basically why he, she was needed there this whole time, just to do all that like stuff. She she basically served her purpose. Yeah, she I mean she cultivated the whole thing. She brought everyone together. And she was so complicated. Like she lived such a hard life. She was a servant for so long. She's tired. That's it. <gasps> oh my gosh. All right, guys. That was Game of Thrones, the Lone Night, babe. What did you think <laughs> about that? I thought that was intense. The whole time, like at the beginning, you know, I was kind of having a good time, just trying not to be so nervous. But boy, it made me feel like the end of the world was actually here and I didn't really know what we were going to do to get out of it. It was that's how I felt the whole time. I felt like your back was against the wall the whole episode. It was I stressful. I kind of felt like Sam did, you know, his character is very. He takes things serious and he understands the importance of it and all. But at the same time, he has like a sense of humor about him. He takes things very light in yeah. a way. But when it really came down to it, man, it was no laugh of matter. It was for right. real. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of. A perfect way to start out this episode with Sam because, you know, that's exactly how it was. And then, you know, it's almost like she said to Tyrion, well, if we win the war, we need your mind. And then it goes from Sam straight into Tyrion. And mm -hmm. then they won the war. So I guess we're going to need Tyrion's mind. So I just really love the way they started out. Yeah. I just love the transition with the camera. Yes. On him. And then it goes straight to Tyrion. And then he starts walking that way. So cold, man. Just the way they filmed it was very extraordinary. I really liked the suspense. One of the most intense scenes to me was when the Dithraki are charging with the firing swords, which don't let me get into Melisandre. She absolutely killed this episode, but I'm going to just talk about the Dithraki for now. The Dithraki with those fiery, I know they're not called sickles, but you know, they're little swords things. <laughs> Them going into the darkness and then just like disappearing was absolutely insane. Was it made crazy. my heart drop. Yeah. I was nuts. Yeah, shout out to Melisandre, man, for coming through. Shout out to the LOL, the Lord of Light. Yep. Um, it, it hit me in real time because I didn't really put two and two together that their weapons were extremely useless because I'm sitting there thinking open combat, door thraki, let's go. Right, I kind of thought for some reason, though, Gendry made them a little something, but... It well, didn't... that's what I was thinking, right? <laughs> yeah. But then when you said the sickle thing, I started getting in my head about it, and I was just Thinking like, wait, and like I, I saw them make daggers and stuff, but never that. Right. Yeah. I was thinking they should be making arrows and everything, but I guess it's <laughs> right. Anyway, and I know like setting arrows on fire is not like a real thing. Like we get all that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. So she basically she she showed up huge, kind of like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Yes, very similar to that moment when the light comes. Yes, absolutely. And, and then and she even said the next time I'm here, I'm gonna die, and like a hundred percent, like. Everything she's kind of predicted, though it has been like kind of shaky because she hasn't really like read all of the things that the Lord of Light said correctly. Right. But when it mattered, she came through. When it mattered, she had her faith, man, because she kind of mm -hmm. went through this. You know, it seemed like when uh, when Stannis died, she sort of lost her way a little bit. Like yeah. she was like questioning her faith. Or she something, was like, you know? she was like, I'm doing all this junk and it's bad junk and it's not even making sense for what. And she started like ducking people. And, yeah. You know, before she was so bold about who she was and what she stood for mm -hmm. and all that. So, 
uh, amazing. I was really caught up in that moment of trying to figure out the logistics of the battle because I know if I watch this again, man, I'm pretty sure I'm going to understand there's a lot more logistics that was going on like within the war. Mm -hmm. and so I was really doing my best to try to catch that stuff in time. I realized about 10 minutes in, I need to stop thinking about that so much and just focus on like what's going right. on because it was kind of a lot to keep up with. But I, I was kind of busy caught up on that. I thought right. it was really sad. Grey Worm had to watch all of his people die, but who else would take that role, man? I mean, only right. the unsullied, like, you know, every everyone had, had their role to play, yeah. essentially. The unsullied weren't scared. They were perfect soldiers. Uh, they held the line as so she could light the trenches. The Dothraki had an unrealistic <laughs> belief in themselves, even against the dead man. And, you know, it's like everyone, right, wrong, and different, they all had their role to play. I mean, even yeah. Theon in the end definitely had his role to play, so... Um, thought that was pretty insane. The battle, the battle was just going off, man. The next thing you know, two D's get stabbed. Uh, it was yeah. really sad to see Ed go. It's it's sad to see Ed go because, I mean, that was the last great man from the Night's Watch. You know, what yes. I mean? that was the what the 199th commander. Is that 999. Yeah, 900. Yeah. I'm tripping. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. 999th commander, and just a great character. God, it was sad to see him go. Like yeah. the. Ed was kind of one of those that always gave you a snarky remark in the beginning, but he you just loved him anyways. He was just a good character through and through. Sad to see him go. Leanna well, I mentioned Mormont. it before. Can I mention? Yeah. Ed was so great because there's uh, Bron down south, and then up north there's Ed, and they're mm -hmm. kind of like the same character in a way. They provide the same type of like, you know what I'm saying? They're kind of like the same to me. I don't know. Yeah. I, I really like both characters. Yeah. And it was just sad to see him go. Right. It sucked, mm -hmm. but um, another one that was sad to see was Leanna Mormont, which, you know, we dubbed Ellie Mormont, but it was absolutely insane because her last moment, she, you know, they said everyone at Bear Island fights like 100 people or whatever, 62. She took down a freaking giant. Yeah, she took down a giant. Like she was 50 people or something, yep. man, so... So, like, she was true to her word through and through. She fought for the North. That was great. And I, she taught such a big game. And she provided. So, but she backed it up. Too, right. Yeah. And that's sad for House Mormont because now it's no longer the two. Yeah, the two. I didn't even think about that, babe. Yeah. I didn't think about it till just now. Wow, until I just man. said it. But, yeah, because Jorah, too, which was, the, was hard to see because... But I would honestly say Jorah wouldn't have wanted to go out any other way, which would be fighting for Khaleesi, so... Sad, but true. And that sucks for Khaleesi. Another one that sucked was Beric Zondarian because we knew it was his last life. But the coolest thing ever, like looking back at this episode, was that his purpose that the Lord of Light kept bringing him back for was to save Arya, to go kill the Night King. Right. So that's Which beautiful. I, I literally, I never in a thousand years would have thought that. I, I genuinely thought, I mean, obviously, I thought it was going to be John or Daenerys, but then I was thinking, like, it could be Tyrion because that would be sick. I mean, obviously, it could have been a lot of people, but the Arya angle, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, man. Right. I mean, early on, it's like she was not supposed to fight. You know, everyone's supposed to fight. Even Tyrion's mm -hmm. supposed to fight, but she wasn't supposed to. Right. You know? And the story sort of started with the Starks. It started with Ned. And, yeah, Arya Stark, man, the one who took down the Night King and essentially saved all of the living. So, right. What a legend, man. She better not have to pay for L ever, <laughs> ever. Or hot pies. Yeah. Free that, hot pies for life for Arya. <laughs> right. That was insane. I, I love that moment. I feel like it, it was built up, you know, but not at the same time. So it was surprising to me because I genuinely thought it would be John or Danny, the ones to take down the Night King. Even I kind of thought it would have been Bran, which was weird. I know maybe people wouldn't think that, but. I thought he was warging in the beginning to take down the Night King or something. Like I thought that. he was going to get in a dragon, but that's right. not what the show did. One thing right, I really. Because when they said you'll fly, I was like, oh, yeah. The only plot hole that really stood out to me, and it <laughs> might not even be a plot hole. I probably just missed something, which is, you know, Aquaman's Razor and all. But why did he warg into Ravens just to go basically say what's up? And then. He, right. But the thing is, he warged into those Ravens, but then was warg the whole time. So right, and then when the Night King finally got there, he just popped out of it. Right, so I don't know. Like maybe in the the next episodes, we'll find out exactly what that was. Right. But um, yeah, if you guys can let us know, <laughs> that would be pretty sick. Uh, right, Theon but, though in these mo in that moment protecting Bran, absolutely amazing job by Theon. I loved that. Not only was 
one of the moments there's some you know how every once in a while there's just a heart touching moment that's just so well put together uh brianna tark comes to my mind her and jamie mm -hmm. that moment with theon incredible yeah man, I, when when brian said when when Bran told him he was home, broke my heart. It was like, oh my gosh, because you know Theon's been searching for that his whole the whole series. Theon's been searching for is he a Greyjoy? Is he a Stark? And Bran told him you're home. So that right. was so beautiful because Theon chose to go there instead of just go to the Iron Islands and probably survive. And I do want to say something about Theon, guys, because I know I have a lot of strong opinions about Theon. Right. So when Theon was on the boat with uh, his sister, and his sister was being held. By their cousin, right? By Euron. Yeah, by Euron. He had the knife up to her throat. And a lot of people was like, I never understood why people get on Theon in this moment. What was he supposed to do? If he would have charged, he probably would have just got killed. They would have cut her throat. And I understand that. And when I watched the show, I had such a gut reaction that I was really ashamed of Theon in that moment. And I think I understand why. And I think I might can help you guys understand. Because I know a lot of people probably have that reaction. And maybe I can help clarify it. The reason I got upset in that moment is because... There's two trains of thought when it comes to Theon. There's people who think Theon obviously rede redeemed himself and, you know, he deserves all the praise and you shouldn't say anything bad about him. And I understand that train of thought. And then there's people who kind of have my train of thought. Theon killed a lot of innocent people just because he was having, like, essentially an identity crisis, to put it lightly. And I feel like he owes the universe his life because he's taken innocent life. So he's net negative, if that makes sense. Like... So in that situation, if he jumps off the boat, he doesn't know. He jumps off the boat and they kill her. That's probably what would have happened in real life if it wasn't the show, right? So I feel like if he jumps off the boat and they kill her, or if he runs towards her to try to save her and they kill her and kill him, what difference does it make? In that moment, the only thing that matters, Theon doesn't know that hypothetically they're going to keep Arya or keep his sister alive. Because like I said, they probably shouldn't have done that. So hypothetically, in Theon's mind, the reason he should have rushed to try to save her instead of fleeing off the boat is because if she was going to die in that moment with everything that she had done to protect her baby brother Theon, including the total kamikaze mission of going into Winterfell to try to capture him from Ramsay, right. the last image in her mind, she did not deserve to watch her brother cowardly jump off a boat. Because I, you don't really get the benefit of hindsight in that situation. The last image that her sister should have seen of Theon was him trying to redeem all the mistakes he's made and trying to save her. And I understand right. a lot of people probably don't understand that. But do you get what I'm saying? Right. In that moment, maybe it was his time to charge. And I feel like he made that mistake. He knew he was wrong for it. And even though it all worked out the way it worked out in hindsight, he rushed the mad he rushed the Night King because that's probably what he should have did to Euron. Right. And essentially he ran and it was basically a suicide mission anyways. So he redeemed you get what himself I'm saying? in that. But moment. he did redeem yeah. himself, which was beautifully made. I mean, I, yeah. I know I've gotten on Theon's head so much. And he's such a great character, but he's definitely one of the best characters in the show. I think in terms of just pure acting, I think that he's genuinely like one of the best yeah, in the series. Phenomenal. Did a great job. I loved his character. I loved it so much because a lot of us has had so many conversations about Theon, so many passionate arguments about Theon. And it's been a lot of fun. And I really do appreciate you guys' perspective. And I definitely know for a fact, as I watch this show again in my life, I'll appreciate and like Theon. I'll probably come. Well, because you'll you know, aside. you'll know the ending that how big of an impact well, he made in this a lot long of things, night. But in those moments, I didn't have hindsight. Like yeah. I, I didn't know he was going to do that, so I was just judging him based on the best I could. And but yeah, man. So Theon went out like a straight boss. Sorry to go on a total tire, like, you know, tirade right there. But sometimes I say things in episodes and I don't really realize how they're going to hit to you guys. And you know, I got a lot of comments about that. So I did want to address it, but love right. Theon's character, man. He definitely deserves Just like RIP to that character, just a phenomenal one. Always one that, like, every time you see Theon, you see a predict, uh, and you're not, you can't predict what he's going to do because he has all these different, like, he has a Reek personality. He has a Greyjoy personality. He has a Stark personality. His unpredictability when you see him was absolutely phenomenal. So it's going to suck to not see that anymore. And it's going to suck when Sansa finds out, too, as well. Yeah, the show is missing a great character in Theon, for sure. And in Jorah, uh, Lady Mormont. We're missing a lot of great characters, basically. So, right. kind of glad to see the show coming good. to an end in that sense. Right. I, I want to say, though, these are these main characters. I'm not really sure. They're kind of like They're assistant like main characters. Mm -hmm. So, I did notice that none of like the true main characters passed away in this one, which was like... The core characters, the core, but yeah. that was kind of like kind of a blessing for that because except for if you count the Night King, I don't know, but 
what should we talk about? Like, well, there was some things about the show that I didn't love, but I don't want to get into too much of that, man. Like I said, I'm address more of that stuff at the end of the series. We'll mm-hmm. kind of touch over all this. But like, for example, I wanted to see Bran become a dragon. That's my own personal immaturity, man. I just wanted that because I'm a child. Uh, well, I thought it. I mean, and I could be wrong, but I've genuinely thought when the three eye raven was telling him he's gonna fly. I thought that's what that meant by that. I really did because I I've thought I've been looking forward to that the whole series. Right. You have because ever since you saw the working, you thought it could like, you know, go into a dragon. I thought that was like the reason they put it right. in. Right. And I didn't really think about it until he said he could fly and then I was like, Oh yeah, for sure. But another thing is I was kinda hoping Bran because we seen him, you know, go into like he his dog Summer, right? I thought maybe Bran could do it to whatever. So I thought maybe we would his see wolf, him with ghosts. Bad. Yeah, sorry, his wolf. Um I thought maybe I would see him like work into ghosts or something, you know, I, I wasn't sure, but basically that, that episode right there left us with a lot of like, I don't really know exactly who's left. I mean, I guess unless you took ghosts and gave him like a grill made out of Valyrian steel, it probably wouldn't really do no good for the wolves, right? right. A wolf's bite doesn't really kill a walker. Yeah, it does. A the, wolf's bite does? Yeah. Remember? He does did. Really? Yeah. That was like season one when... When they saved Gior Mormont. A wolf did. Ghost a wolf did. Oh, really? Yeah, Ghost saved the dead. I must have forgot. It's been a long journey. Yeah, that was like season one or something. But um, I I guess like, okay, so back what I was saying, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, baby. It's okay. Back what I was saying, um, I guess we're kind of left with, we don't, we're not really sure with who's left because in a lot of those scenes, they were like kind of fighting for their lives, but then they were taken off. So... We're not sure 100 percent who survived and who didn't in this battle, but we do know there is four, five people who died, which we know is Leon, Jorah, Theon, Beric, and the Night King. Mm-hmm. So we know those those ones are definitely gone, and Melisandre, of course. But I I'm really not sure who else we have left, which is crazy. Is there anything else you want to say? Well, it was just really nice to see Melisandre get rest essentially because yeah, I know she's a character a lot like Theon, and a lot of people really love her character a lot of people really don't love her character it's just gray with her you people know? aren't as, as passionate about her as theon maybe it's because i haven't had such a, a strong opinion about but her she as theon. also killed shireen which was like absolutely insane but i mean i feel for her because lives, yeah she was being guided i mean and theon in a sense not to hate on theon i love theon but theon in a sense took it upon himself yeah Hers she was, was sort of shown the you know? Lord of Light was saying, and I don't know exactly what images she saw because I didn't get to see, but it seems like it was just a bunch of mysteries and images. And I mean, if she misperceives, she misperceives, you know, right? And that that seems like, like that was her downfall was misperceiving him, but then redeeming herself, just like I guess that's that's kind of the good thing with with Theon and Melisandre, even though they had gray areas throughout, they did get to redeem themselves. Melisandre ended up being a good character. Yeah. I think I always just sort of was weary about her because she was working with magic. Yeah. And to be honest, she was a direct servant of the Lord of Light, mm-hmm. which essentially meant she had no free will, which I would translate that to meaning like an angel, kind of like an angel is like a direct servant of like right. God, you know? And so her whole vibe was just sort of like gothic and negative. Though. Right. Does that, does that make sense? Mm. So it, it sort of made it seem like kind of... It kind of just made her seem like a bad character at the right. end of the day. Well, I don't know. I'm not even gonna lie. Season one or season one or two, whenever she was introduced, she was kind of sketch. You know, she was giving birth to shadow babies and drinking wine and like assassinating drinking sweet poison. Little Renly Baratheons. Right. And it's drinking poison and then looking people in the face and watching them drink the poison, you know. Just being like that, but not to mention what she did to Shireen. Right. I mean, she just did a lot of bad stuff, but like I said, the the redemption arcs and her and Theon. I think we're, I personally think they were amongst some of the best I've seen in television, period. Yeah. That we've seen on this channel, that is. But I do want to say that this is, I know I've said it in this show, but this reminds me a lot. This reminded me of Endgame a lot because everyone came together to to fight humanity. And I love things like that for some reason. Like, I just love when we bring everyone from different areas for the common goal. Yeah. I mean, it's really nice to like have unity, you know, division is not really good for the spirit. So it was just nice to see everyone working together. Unfortunately, certain somebody didn't show up. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Uh, Somebody totally missed the battle, just like communists. And uh, was that a name? Communists? Communists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Somebody totally missed the battle, man. So there's still a lot going on down South. (laughs) This show is not over. I know that it seems like there's has 
I know it seems like there's been a great victory. We should all be drinking now, like yeah. Tyrion, telling jokes, becoming eunuchs, all that good stuff, man. But uh, there's more. <laughs> yeah, there's so much more. I feel like this show has so much more to drop. And one thing about this show, man, it started out cutting Ned's head off. That was the first time I was shocked in the right. show. And then next thing you know, a season later, you get shocked twice. Next thing you know, dude, this show just has a way of one up in itself yeah. every episode. So that, hopefully, that was insane. What was the most shocking part for you in that? For me? In that episode, what was the most shocking? The most shocking? Well, the most shock, the part that made me jump the most was definitely when Arya stabbed that. Oh my Walker. god! That yeah. was just crazy because well, I thought she was gonna jump on his back in like Assassin's Creed. I was like, bro, they're about to get a freaking lawsuit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, I was, I was excited on your behalf because I thought you were gonna, but you didn't say anything. I didn't know if you were catching the same vibe as I was. Well, because well, the thing, the thing in Assassin's Creed is like, oh, is, am I? Is it not like that? <laughs> my bad. Well, well, that was more Last of Us style to me, but in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> When they walk up on someone, you poke them with this. It's like, that's why I was like, uh, maybe not Assassin's Creed, but more Last of Us vibe. Anyways, man, <laughs> and then she turns around and whoosh. Uh, the most shocking moment. Let me think. I guess to me, man, the most shocking moment. It, it's just some low hanging cheese, though, bro. It's the Aria moment. Yeah, sure. I was the Aria. But to me, man, my me personal too. favorite, most shock, my my the best part of the show to me. And then, and then when I get done, please follow up with your favorite. But my favorite part of the show was the Theon moment. I thought that was the best moment in the show. My second favorite moment of the show was Little Lady Mormont because I mean, how can you not? You know, what a beast, right? And then, uh, and obviously, like so many great men died fighting, and I, I'm not saying she deserves more credit. Because she's like a tiny little girl, but dude, she deserves more credit because she's a tiny little girl. Like, how <laughs> insane would that be? And uh, like, you have a moment to be scared, and you just stab a giant in the eye. I mean, when I was that age, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, just put yourself in that position, you right? Know? Um, and and it's just really sad. The reason I thought it was so sad is because even though she had the mind of an adult and the heart of a warrior, she was still just a little girl, and she never yeah. really got to like live a long life. She never. As far and as Jorah's like, go to the crypts. Remember, Jorah was like, "I need you in the crypts. I need you to survive for House Mormont." And she was almost offended. At yeah, that. she was That's like, why she dismissed me. him. What, it, what was that? Her uncle? Yeah, she's like, "I'm As, sorry, uncle." <laughs> she's like, I, "I hope you're still alive, uncle," or something like that. Um, because I think in her mind, she's a lot tougher than him. So yeah, love her character. She was love fierce. I loved it too. And I'm not like the biggest The Last of Us fan. She likes it a lot more than I do. I just thought that the little girl just demanded. I mean, she was awesome for Bear Island, man. Bear Island. Long live Bear Island. Uh, what else, babe? What else happened in this episode? Um. Oh, one thing I did want to say. I'm so sorry. Just real quick. I was a little disappointed in the fact that, you know, you were saying in the beginning of the episode, everyone needs to use their superpowers because right? obviously the army yeah. of the dead, everyone's been developing the skill. Mm. So I didn't really see much out of Sansa. I didn't see anything. Well, well what did Sansa I want to say something about it? that, though. So, you know, I was talking about Sansa grabbed those girls and she was like, oh, Mother Mary or whatever the heck she was singing. And she the didn't crypts. do it this time. Well, yeah. And I feel like she did that because that was showing development, character development on her behalf. Because back in the day, she was all rainbows and butterflies, you know, and now she's kind of like grown as a woman. So she's kind of like, like, this is it this time, guys. Like, I'm not going to sit here and, and act like we're going to have a good time. Like, her and Tyrion looked at each other, which is what I was saying when you're like, when you asked me what I was saying, and I said, never mind, is because her and Tyrion gave each other a look like they would rather kill themselves and go out than to face what the dead was coming. So you even saw her holding the dagger, like, about to push it on herself. Was she about to do that? I just thought she was about to start swinging. Oh, I don't um, know, man. I thought she I, was I got the vibe go that they the were. Fight. I thought I got the vibe that they'd rather like take themselves out because when they Let were holding know. each Let other's hands, right? In that moment for sure. When they were holding each other's hand, I felt like it was like a poetic, like we're married, let's just go out, like you know. I don't know. That's what the vibe I got from it. The vibe I get was, I'm gonna start swinging this knife in my left, and I'm gonna start swinging Tyrion in my right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start twisting. I'm I mean, get out maybe, of here. but I, I, the that's just what I felt because I you, felt you're probably right. I felt when the people came down, when the crypts were taken over, which I know it was came from within. So crazy to see all the Stark family right. come into life. Insane. Well, I felt like because like it was being taken over down there that they felt like maybe up top was getting screwed. So they were like, it's over. Oh, yeah. 
So that's what I was thinking. So that's why I was kind of like, maybe they're going to take each other out. Like, by- I just feel like even, nah, man, I would never in a million years take myself out. I'd die fighting. If not just for the simple fact that if you die fighting, you at least get Well, I just thought for her, like, this is her ancestor she's having to take out. That's really, you know, crazy. Nah, I'm some dang, some, she said, grab the snowplow, boys. <laughs> uh, what else really happened in this episode? Arya basically came through clutch, man. She said, <laughs> It was sick. Insane. Yeah, insane. Insane. Little. And it happened to be with that dagger that almost killed Bran. You she know? basically hit him with a three piece and a soda, basically. Right. And, that was uh, took fire. Him out. He, um, yeah, he just went down. It, it almost felt easy in a way. Right. You know what I mean? Because they have hyped this character up. They've hyped up the dead. So a part of me wants to say, uh, there is a part of me that says it felt a little easy. It felt a little quick. It felt a little dark. Well, because it was like an hour long, you know, but. But it did feel like there was a time in it because, like, the music and, like, the color grade and all of that, it felt like we were going to lose to me for some reason. I just felt like there was no winning. I There was a time where I just really had no idea how we were going to win. Did you know? Okay. So when they said to Arya, you're going to close some eyes and blah, 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 blue us, right? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, White Walkers. Did you know in that moment that she was going to kill the Night King? No, I didn't even think, when I heard the Blue Eyes thing, I remember editing that, and I was like, oh, Joffrey. Signed it off. No, 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 I'm talking about in this episode, Melisandre says to her, she repeats it, and then she repeats the Blue Eyes part. And then I was like, oh, the White Walkers. Because in that moment, I was thinking, oh, well, the dude's destiny was to save her. That's why he came back all those times. Finally saved her. The Hound's destiny was to save her. Arya is important. Did you put it together in real time that she was going to kill the Night King? Because I personally was thinking like, oh, that makes sense. But then I still just didn't really right, think because, about it in real time. Because it's I, like I forgot. I, for some reason, thought it was John's destiny to do it. Or Daenerys. Because they always say, like, they're having this, like, throne battle about, like, you know, the prince who's promised all that crap that Melisandre's feeding them. But, I mean, not crap, because obviously it was real. Because, you know... But, you know, Melisandre told both of them that or whatever. And she said she brought them together. So I figured it, it was going to be one of them to take out the Night King because I thought it was their destiny. Right. But it seems to me like maybe it was Arya's destiny. Like, I see. What, yeah, that's kind of I see what you're saying. Yeah. Kind of weird in that sense. But I, I love I mean, it makes sense to me that it was Arya, though. You know? Yeah, because honestly, who deserves? Well, I was going to say who deserves it more. But John's low key like. John's low key went to hard home and seen it all. But Arya's done all the types of training that she needed for this. She was a sneak, you know, she was doing that, the turning of that little, what do you call that? A stick. Bow staff. Yeah, bow staff. She was doing all that, all these things she's learned throughout these uh, the seasons. And it's, it was so good to see her finally. It's use almost it like all. If, her, if her dad wouldn't have got his head cut off, she would have never went down that path. So. Right. So all, and that, you know what? That's exactly what Bran said. He said to Theon, you know, had all that stuff not happened, it wouldn't have led you here. And that was such a beautiful thing to think about because all these characters and all of their moments led them to save humanity. Honestly. And it's it, that's one of those things, you know, like free will versus determinism. That's when you get into that debate. And this is obviously a very deterministic universe in a sense. And so I personally don't know how much I love that. You know, it seems like no matter what it's almost like saying like oh you get a pass the is totally okay or not just the but anyone it's totally okay what you did because in hindsight you know what i mean hindsight's yeah. a very weird thing but yeah i don't know i don't really know how much i really i don't know how i feel about the prophecy to be honest i don't really know how much i understood it right to be honest so i didn't i didn't you guys understand been, it too much i know that i've seen it in a lot of things I've, that's why i don't really talk about it that much right I understand the only way I understood it was I felt like it was John or Daenerys because they said someone born out of smoke and dust is going to is going to save the long night or whatever. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was Daenerys in a nutshell. But then when John starts riding the dragons, it was making me think it could be either. So I don't really know what to say or think about that. But that's the prophecy as I know it. But it was cool to see Arya be part of it, obviously, because Beric. Right. Because if Beric wasn't involved in saving Arya, then I would think that she had nothing to do with such prophecy. Yeah, I love seeing the Hound and Beric just fighting together at the mm-hmm. end of the world, man. Uh, all those moments like that, for sure, just really beautiful in the show. And I don't know, man. Basically, winter has came. We didn't <laughs> lose a dragon. We didn't lose any dragons. No, no, okay, thank, so thankfully. no dragons went down. I, well, except for Viserion again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he went down. 
So we didn't lose any dragons at the end of the day. Um, the north is still intact as far as I know. And like I said, we don't know who's over. left. It's hard to see who was left because the last time we saw Sam, he was fighting for his life, like really backs against the wall fighting for his life. Well, if you don't see him die on the screen, once I rolled their right, their right. lives. So you, confirm you can't kills. kill a character right. like that, especially not. And, you know, honestly, when the scenes were super dark, I was like, bro, we ain't about to lose nobody right now. These characters deserve better deaths. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't deserve that. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. So that that all kind of leads to, OK, we beat ever. We beat the army of the dead. And obviously we have Cersei to take out to get the Iron Throne. But when and how are we going to do this? Because now our army's a little beat down. Um, and then another thing is, I'm not trying to interrupt you, but remember when Cersei, not Cersei, remember when Daenerys went on this whole thing about on and on, first there's a start, then a Baratheon, and on and on it goes, and we're going to mm, break the will yeah. and all this. If she just goes and kills Cersei and then takes the throne, nothing's different. Right. Do you get what yeah. I'm trying to say? So I don't really know. Like Tyrion said, Queen of the Ashes, basically. Right. And and what and if she, even if she goes and she takes the throne with like diplomacy and democracy and she goes and she like, you know, wins over the people or whatever the case may be. Right. It's still just the same. And even if she's an amazing queen, what if her son isn't? Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. It's just I don't know how this is going to end. I just don't know. And it's like. Like I had a lot of these questions at the beginning and I genuinely kind of felt like the end of the show would look different than this, I mm. guess, if that makes sense. Not that I had expectations, not that I'm not loving it because I'm absolutely loving it. I just don't know where we go from here. I, I don't know where we go. So um, I don't really know. It's so weird. Imagine every house, every the next uh, the next a thousand years is going to be, oh, your house was not there the day the the day the, the, the battle came. of the living. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like. You you doom your house to basically being on the side of like not living, yeah. In a sense, so do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So in a sense, I wouldn't be breaking the wheel, be continuing the wheel. Well, I'm just saying, like the Lannister. Well, I guess Tyrion, in a sense, saved the Lannister family by fighting, but Cersei doomed the Lannister family for eternity because she she chose she not to show up, up to yeah. that battle. Yeah, like you can never really redeem yourself from that. So. <laughs> yeah, she would be the queen who didn't show. <laughs> well, she might redeem herself if another who knows? king comes. Yeah. Which, you know, I don't like we said, there's three more episodes. And now that we defeated who I thought in general was the end game person, I don't know what we do. <laughs> I don't know. But I feel like, well, we, I mean, we still got the same old questions we got to settle, man. Uh, what's John and Daenerys going to do? Are they going to get married? What are they going to do? Uh, How is Daenerys going to start acting now that Jorah's dead? You know what I'm saying? Is she going to have any personality changes? Because she... That's sort of like her rock in a sense, right? Right. So, and she like needs the North bad now because she doesn't have an army. Yeah, so all she her needs, people are dead. Right, yeah. so she, she has her dragons, but she needs the support of John. which at first, you know, John was Aegon. You know, we know he's an Aegon. But now he's like kind of has the upper hand unless you want to count the dragons. Like, but he has the people. I feel like at this point, Daenerys should have everyone who's not in King's Landing should basically be on Team Daenerys. At this point, I mean, no one could possibly support Cersei at this point. Right. She didn't even fight for life. Right. But what I'm saying is Daenerys, like, I feel like this show is trying to kind of put John and Danny against each other when we know they should really be working together. But you can tell based off just like the way John didn't want to communicate well, with her. are not doing it anymore. They used to do it a lot. <laughs> Kiss a lot. <laughs> now they're like, he's like. Like, you're my aunt. That's kind of. Yeah, a little awkward. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I guess, I guess now that Danny needs the North support to get the Iron Throne, it's going to be an interesting dynamic. I'm really interesting to see how these ladies decide to finish this off. So, mm -hmm. um, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. This this battle was absolutely insane. Like I said, man, hopefully you guys can see the video. We're going to try to turn up the brightness and all that. And I need to remember to turn all the monitor brightness stuff down because right, it's yeah. really bright we're right get now. Blasted this or this something. looks crazy right now. <laughs> yeah. You guys won't see what it looks like from my perspective, but oh man, very bright, very bright. So um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Seriously, hit us up on Patreon if you guys want to see the full uncut reactions. We're going to knock this out very soon, man. We are almost done, guys, which is insane to say. Halfway through gonna, season eight already. Halfway through season eight, baby. And we're going to start House of Dragons soon. And. Obviously, we'll catch that up all the way until the new season comes out. And then when the seasons come out in the future, we're just going to 
check them out so we'll be here for a long time so i know there's finality it feels like it's coming to an end but we just getting started baby. right let's go